Hey everyone, it's Nick from Sonic Tone Amps. I just got done filming the demo videos for these new amps here, and I figured it was as good a time as any to dive into the next topic for the next video, which is the class of operation of amplifiers, specifically what class A amps are, and what they aren't, and what the alternatives are out there. Now this is wading into a bit of a minefield because there are people out there that have very strong opinions about this. We're going to dive into it and get to the bottom of it, so stick around. <laughs> So what are these new amps? These new amps are part of the new series from Sonic Tone called the SE series, and they are both single ended Class A amplifiers, which is pertinent to the discussion today. You can check out their demos on our YouTube channel, but for now we're going to stick with the topic of what the class of operation of an amplifier is. It simply designates the mode of operation of the power amplifier, it defines how the amplifier amplifies the audio signal, and what devices, in this case tubes, are used and how many to amplify that signal. Each class of operation has its pros and cons, with some being more efficient and others having more pleasing sonic characteristics that some people prefer, at least subjectively speaking. So what does Class A mean for a tube amp? Well, from a very simple standpoint, Class A might be the easiest to understand because it means that the entire input wave of the audio signal is amplified at all times. The entire 360 degree waveform is amplified through the amplifying device. And that tube is always on. It never goes into cutoff and never shuts off like it can do in other classes of operation. So what are the advantages of Class A? Well, typically it's a simpler layout with fewer components, usually with one output tube. Also, like mentioned before, it doesn't go into shutoff or cutoff, so the tube's always on and there's no, there's no crossover distortion to worry about. From the standpoint of a guitar amp, where it might produce an overdriven sound, there's an emphasis on even order harmonics and asymmetrical clipping with some fine pleasing. There's a touch and a feel and dynamics with Class A amps that other people like as well. What are the disadvantages? Well, Class A amps are inefficient. They are typically low powered amps. These two here are 6 watt and 12 watt amps. Also, because the fact that the tube is always on and never gets a chance to rest or go into cutoff, it puts more wear and tear on it and shortens the lifespan of it. So the next mode of operation is Class B, which we won't spend a whole lot of time on because it's not really pertinent to tube amps. It's where you have multiple amplifying devices and one of them will conduct the wave signal for exactly half the cycle or 180 degrees and then hand it off to the other to conduct the other half or the other 180 degrees of the wave cycle. But because there's such a sharp and harsh handoff of the signal between the two amplifying devices, it produces a lot of crossover distortion. So this mode of operation is really unusable for amplifiers where the quality of the audio signal is of utmost importance. So the next mode of operation is Class AB, which is sort of the best of both worlds. Like Class B, it uses multiple amplifying devices, but each device will amplify more than 180 degrees in the input cycle, but much less than 360 degrees. And at the point where one of the devices is starting to go into shutoff or cutoff, it will actually continue to amplify beyond 180 for a brief moment while the other device is picking up and starting to amplify and it will kind of create like a layover between the two devices and that helps smooth out any unwanted crossover distortion and really produces what seems like a smooth continuous audio wave. So the advantages of Class AB is that it's a more efficient topology that allows you to get higher power output out of your amps. The output transformer is a little smaller watt for watt. For example, the Delta Junior is a 15 watt AB amp, and its transformer is a bit smaller than the transformer in this amp here, which is about a 12 to 15 watt amp. And also due to the output section design and the output transformer, there's the added benefit of power supply hum cancellation, and as mentioned before, crossover distortion is significantly minimized. What are any disadvantages to Class AB operation? Well, there isn't as much of an emphasis on even order harmonics or the asymmetrical clipping like Class A. And the dynamics and touch and response do feel a little more stiff and sterile in comparison to Class A. <music> a 
Are there any other classes of operation? Well, yes, there are. There's class C, D, E, F, G, and H. And I know it just sounds like I'm rattling off letters of the alphabet, but they really do exist. Go look it up on the internet or on Wikipedia. In fact, it should be mentioned that Class D is a very popular mode of operation. It's in switching topology and it's extremely efficient, produces a lot of power for a very lightweight design, and it's usually used in things like base amps and PA amps. So let's go ahead and step into the minefield now. Which is better, Class A or Class AB? Well, you really can't define one as better than the other. It's really about the application. If you don't mind a lower output amp and you want that kind of touch and feel of a Class A amp, then by all means, go Class A. But if you want something that gives you a little more headroom and a little more output, then go Class AB. Truth be told, most amps on the market are Class AB. There's very few out there that are truly Class A. In fact, that's a bit of a hot topic because there's been amps famously marketed as Class A over the years that really are Class AB amps. Now, most amps operate in the Class A region up to a certain point. The audio coming in is not amplified, the volume's not turned up a lot, so the amplifying devices, the tubes, aren't going into cutoff yet. But at some point, as you turn the volume up and amplify the signal, it will drive the tubes into cutoff, and at that point, it's really operating in Class AB territory. So amps like the Vox AC30, that's one that's out there in iterations like the AC30, where people will say it's a Class A amp. There's an amp builder by the name of Randall Aiken who does a deep dive in a tech article on his website that talks about whether or not a Vox AC30 is a Class A amp. I'll put the link in the description below. And in that article, he does all the scientific data and graphing that charts the voltages and everything in that amp to prove once and for all whether or not that amp truly is Class A. Spoiler alert! Turns out it's not, it's actually Class AB. But he goes a little bit further and talks about what it would take to convert it into a Class A amp, which is a little harder to do than you might think because the voltages need to be set different. They're typically lower in a Class A amp. So it's not like you can just flip a switch and convert an amp over to Class A. So it's funny I mentioned that because there have been amps that have been marketed to have a switch on them that switches them into Class A operation. But if you take a close look at the schematics, it looks like all they're doing is switching it from fixed bias to cathode bias. And I think people are a little cavalier with cathode bias in Class A and use them interchangeably. Yes, Class A amps are usually cathode biased, but a cathode bias amp is not necessarily running in Class A operation and may be running in Class AB operation. Also, a closer look at the schematics shows that there's no device that lowers the voltage for the Class A operation. Class A amps usually have lower voltages to the tubes because the tubes are on all the time. And if they're getting the high voltage that's required for Class AB operation, they'll probably fail in short order. So who makes Class A amps? Well, currently on the market, there's the Fender Champ, which is marketed as a single ended Class A amp with a single 6V6 in it for about 4 watts. There's also the Vox AC4, which is also marketed as a single ended Class A amp with a single EL84 in it for about 4 watts. Then there's some discontinued products that came out in about the mid 2000s to about the mid 2010s, like the Marshall Class 5, which was marketed as a 5 watt single ended Class A amp with a single EL84 in it. And then there was the Epiphone Valve Junior, also marketed as a single ended Class A amp with a single EL84 in it. Both of those were about 5 watts of power. So in 2023, I'm pleased to announce that Sonitone has launched its own single ended Class A lineup. This is the SE series, and you have the SE6 up here, which is about a 6 watt amp using an EL84. Then you have the SE12 here, which is about a 12 watt amp using the octal tube of your choice. Right now it's loaded up with an EL34. So check out more information about them at our website at sonictoneamps.com and go to our YouTube channel to check out the demo videos. I hope this video has helped clear up any misconceptions about the Class A operation of tube amps and other classes of operation for tube amps. Come back and check out more videos here at our YouTube channel and make sure you subscribe and we'll see you soon.